Programming is hard enough. Today we're gonna to talk about a few things that new programmers do to make it even harder. Specifically ways that you might be making it more likely to catastrophically lose your code. Welcome back everybody. Today's topic was actually inspired by a photo that I took recently. I'll get to that in a minute, but it got me thinking about one of the most heartbreaking scenarios. That is when you've spent hours, blood, sweat, and tears working on a problem, building a bunch of code, and then losing all of that hard work and having to start over from scratch. If any of you out there are non-programmers, you're probably going, how does that even happen? Well, the more seasoned people on this channel are just thinking, yeah, I, I've done that. We know your pain. In fact, I'll bet a lot of you out there have comparable stories. So if you don't mind, pause the video and go down in the comments and share your story. How did you tragically lose your code? And while you're all sharing your stories, I also wanted to share a big thanks to all of you who help support this channel, especially those who support the channel through Patreon or through buying merch. This video is about losing your code, but if you want access to the code for my videos, you can get that through Patreon as well as access to my monthly office hour. So a big thanks to all of you who support this channel. Okay, so you're done sharing your story? Great, now let's move on. Because today I wanna to talk about just a few ideas in no particular order, basically great ways for you to catastrophically lose your hard written code. The first may seem really obvious, but it is so common and is critical. And that is if you wanna lose your code, don't save it. I know it sounds really dumb, but with brand new programmers, it's really common to see them try to write 25, 50, 100 lines of code without saving, without compiling, without testing, just, just trying to write it all at once. Now on the flip side, the more seasoned developers behavior is really, I think, embodied in this photo. Now, this is a laptop that my grad students used for years, and yes, this is real. I took this photo just a few days ago, and they literally wore through the command and S keys. I think one of my students was particularly enthusiastic, and while you don't need to hit them quite so hard, you don't need to physically destroy your keyboard, you should be saving your code every few lines. And while you're at it, you should also be testing it to make sure that it actually does what you think it should along the way. And of course, at this point, some of you are probably saying, but Jacob, you don't always do this in your videos. And that's true, as I mentioned in a previous video, video tutorials and actual programming are not always the same. And one way that they're different is that iterative incremental design, basically testing your code every few lines, making sure that it works, that may help you maintain your sanity, but it can also be pretty tedious to watch. And so I try to keep the compiling and running in my videos at a level that is going to be helpful, but also not drive you crazy. But in any real project that I'm working on, I am saving all the time. I am testing all the time, usually every few lines of code. I add a little bit of code and I make sure everything still works. And in order to do that, I have to save my code all the time. Also while we're here, I just also wanna say, don't even think about using your mouse to save your code. Clicking is slow and tedious, and if you are relying on mousing to save your code, you're either gonna give yourself a repetitive stress injury or you're just not gonna be saving your code often enough. So learn the keystrokes, usually that's Control S or Command S, but whatever it is, learn the keystrokes. It's gonna be so much faster and life will just be better. Okay, the second way to tragically lose your code is to use poor terminal window and folder hygiene. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, let me show you. So I recently watched a student working on a project who kept several different editor windows and a bunch of terminal windows open all at the same time. They also had multiple copies of the code in different folders, an older copy save that was maybe partially working. And because they wanted to keep track of what they did before on a previous project or part of this project, the point is, is that they were messy. They had things all over the place. I also noticed that they were opening up individual files as needed. And what this does is it gives you an editor window with a lot of individual files, but it's not always clear where those files actually are. So what happens is in this situation is that you keep switching back and forth between tabs and windows and terminal windows. And it's easy, especially if you're stressed and focused on a deadline that's coming up, it's easy to lose track of what is what. And if you do this long enough, at some point you're going to get confused and you're going to modify the wrong code. Maybe it's the right file name, but the wrong directory. Maybe it's the right method name, but the wrong class, whatever it is, something like this is going to happen. And you're going to end up with a mess. And if you don't catch it early, sometimes it's not really, there's no real painless way to undo the damage that you've done. So what should you do instead? So my advice is to try to keep everything together in one place. If I'm using VS Code, which is what I use for most of my videos, I am going to open one editor window for everything. And I'm gonna open the directory rather than the individual files. 
That way I have a visual reminder of the project structure and the editor is also going to give me visual clues like putting folder information in tabs of files with the same name. I'm also a big fan of using the integrated terminal down here at the bottom because it allows again to me to keep everything in one place. So no window switching, it's all in front of me and it makes it harder for me to get mentally lost in what I'm doing. Now this may seem like a small thing, but it is going to make your life so much better. But of course it won't save all of your problems. It won't solve the, some of the problems that are caused by you just keeping random copies of your code all over the place. And that brings me to the third way to tragically lose your code, and that is simply not using version control. Simple as that, whether you're using Git, Mercurial, SVN, I don't really care, but version control is your friend. Anytime you start a project for a class, for work, for a hobby, if it's anything that you might actually care about that you want to save, that you don't wanna lose, that you wanna be able to, you get the picture, anything that matters, the first thing you should do is start a repository or put it in an existing repository and work in version control. You just wanna be working in your repository. You don't wanna be copying stuff in and then pushing you wanna work in your repository. You make a change, you commit it. You commit frequently. Again, this comes back to working incrementally. You're going to make small changes, commit them frequently, push them frequently. And this gives you a bunch of benefits. For example, if you wanna see your old code, you didn't have to save another copy someplace, just roll back to a previous version and you can see what the code looked like. If there's a particularly important version that you care about, you can always label versions and then roll back to those labeled versions. And then if at some point you make a change that breaks everything, well, no problem, you can just revert and blow away all those changes. And of course, if something happens, you accidentally delete all your code or your computer dies in a fire, well, if you've pushed your changes, you also have a built-in backup mechanism. So when you get a new laptop or when you figure out what happened, you can always pull your changes back and you're back in working order. And one more benefit of using version control in everything you do, as if you needed another benefit since these are already really good, is that you actually will get good at using version control. And for those of you that are just getting started, this is a really important professional skill. You're gonna need it on the job. At least I've needed it on all of my jobs. And so you just wanna be good at it. In fact, so using version control, I just can't say enough about it there. I can't think of a single downside to working in version control all the time. Okay, so now on to number four. So my number four way to accidentally, tragically lose your code is to carelessly use tar. Now, don't get me wrong on this. Tar is great. And for many of your classes, your instructors are going to require you to use tar to turn in your code. But when using tar, you need to be careful. Now, for all of you who aren't familiar with tar, it is a terminal program for archiving files and folders, or as we say it, tarring things up into tar balls that are easy to send over email or submit to an auto grader. Okay, now to understand why tar is so dangerous, let's take a quick look at the scenario. This is just the program that I used from my previous video when we were customizing printf. But let's say that I was doing this for a class and I needed to submit this code, these two files, I needed to submit them as a TGZ file. Well, my usual way of creating a tar ball is gonna be something like this. I'm gonna type in tar and then C for create, V for verbose, cause I wanna see what tar is doing, Z, says I want you to compress things. That's the GZ part of the TGZ file. And then F is to specify the file name that I want. And then I will say, let's do like project1.tgz. And then the things that I'm going to actually tar up. So example.c and make file. Okay, so this is going to work. If I run this, I get this TGZ file. You can see it over here on the left. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is that as your projects get bigger and as you're doing this a lot, first of all, it's a lot to type, but sometimes people will type in this command and they'll forget something. So maybe they're in a hurry and they go CVZF and they forget the project1.tgz and they just say, I want to include example.c and make file. And if I do this, then it's still gonna work. It's still gonna do its thing, but now it's going to save the output, which in this case is the compressed tarball version of makefile, and it's gonna save it on top of example.c. So example.c just got destroyed, and I'm not gonna hit enter because I actually like this. I could, of course, get it back from version control, but I'd rather not have to do this right at the moment. But the point is that if I run this command, my code is now gone. That is, like I said, unless I'm using version control and then I can get it back, but most people who make this mistake are not using version control. 
So don't do that. And this may seem simple, but over the years, I have seen many, many students obliterate their code this way. So how do we avoid it? Obviously, I've mentioned using version control. That really helps a lot. The other is to actually bake my tar command into my make file, basically to make it part of your build system. So let's look really quick at how we would do this. So you could come in, for example, in the make file that I'm creating for this project, and maybe I come in here and I say, okay, I want to have a submit rule in here or a submit target. And this is going to depend on example.c and make file. I could, of course, make this a little more automatic, use more variables and get fancier, but that's not the point of this video. But then in here, I can then just say, I can put my command in here and put project one.tgz and example.c and make file. And the point is here is that I'm gonna be really careful and I'm gonna get this tar command right and make sure I have it right. And then from now on, anytime that I want to create my tarball, let's say I clean this, I can always just say, you know, make, oops, I forgot I was on Mac OS and this example doesn't actually work on Mac OS, it's okay. Uh, but the point is I can say make submit and it's gonna work. And the point is it's always gonna run the same. It's always going to run correctly, even when I'm bleary eyed, stressed and up against a deadline which is by the way, the most common time, the most likely time when you're going to accidentally obliterate your code. It's when you're sleep deprived and you're stressed out and you're really worried because you only have 30 minutes to finish this project. That's when you're gonna make the most mistakes and it's also the time when you can least afford to make those mistakes. So it's kind of the perfect storm. So folks, I hope that's helpful. I hope you learned something new or at least got a useful reminder of something that you used to know, but maybe you haven't been practicing. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribe so you don't miss future videos. All the support really does help the channel. And until next week, happy coding. I'll see you later.